Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Energy Talks with Miss Bree. My name is Bree. I'm a physical medium. I'm also a Celtic shamanic practitioner and an intuitive astrologer. And uh, today I wanted to talk about emotional work. Um, I feel like a lot of people that I talk to sometimes get confused about what I mean when I'm talking about emotional work and so I wanted to create a video on it and um, just bring more awareness to that part of consciousness. Um, yeah, I, I feel like a lot of people have a lot of trouble identifying what their emotional work might be uh, and so today I'm going to give a sort of like a hint on how you can identify what your own emotional work is and how to work through it. Um, if you are a person that feels like you don't, are not connected to your emotions at all and you're not connected to your inner world at all, uh, then this will be probably more difficult for you and I would suggest doing some kind of practice that involves releasing um, all the emotions like on a larger scale so emotional release therapy or some kind of grief ritual um, to get you in touch with your emotions again because in this day and age a lot of people um, push their emotions away or cope or use drugs and what I'm going to be talking about is how you can be consciously aware of your emotions and work through them uh, in a healthy way instead of doing all the stuff like escaping into social media and all of that. So, okay, so doing, why, why do emotional work? Let's ask that question. Um, I feel like I'm sort of an outsider in my family and in my, uh, some of my communities because of my commitment to emotional work and the spiritual path um and you know life might be pretty easy by just going to work every day coming home getting on social media or doing things to cope and then going to bed and not looking at your emotions at all um but i find that in a lot of those cases people really have problems with their mental health and like can get really depressed or suicidal or can just feel like a lack of purpose in life and a lack of like direction. And so what doing your emotional work does is connects you to your inner world um, so that you're managing your emotions and it changes your outer world where everything is much more enjoyable for you and you feel more of a sense of peace every day. So <laughs> that's my argument for why people should do their emotional work. Um, so now I'm going to talk about how do you know what your emotional work is? This is the really tough question, which is why I'm bringing in this thing called mirroring. So mirror work. Um, I personally have the understanding that everything that's happening in your inner world is attracting what's happening in your outer world based on the energy. So I'm a medium and I <clears throat> see everything through an energetic lens. And uh, when I look at other people's lives, I see how um, their beliefs uh, about their inner world reflect to them in their outer world. And this reflection is pretty much the mirror that you would be looking at when doing mirror work. Um, so it's this, understanding that whatever is going on in, in your energetic body is going to be attracting whatever's around you. So um, some examples of this would be like um, if you don't have a good relationship with your mother you're going to keep attracting situations in life where you're having problems with a mother figure or an authoritative female figure because of that. Um, or let's say like you can't stand self-righteous people like that's a belief that you have in your energetic body. Well, if you can't stand them in 
really focus on how much you can't stand them, you'll probably have a lot of interaction interactions with self-righteous people where you end up getting triggered and like having to stand up for yourself and that sort of thing. And so um, that's just a couple of examples. Um, or let's say you look at people and um, <clears throat> they're being, you, you think they're being too sensitive about something. Well, that could be because you shut down your sensitivities inside of you. And so like, that's a wound that you would have to then help heal so that you don't find those type of people annoying. Um, <laughs> so this is the concept of mirror work. So noticing these behaviors and looking in the mirror, we can start to realize that we have more of an accountability when it comes to our life. Um, like what we think, what we do. And like when we have this accountability over like knowing that our inner energetic world is what's affecting our outer energetic world, then we can actively change our awareness and actively change our reality and <clears throat> I know there's a lot of people out there that kind of see this as woo-woo like you know they've watched the secret or they've watched these things that yeah are, are like very like spiritual um where it's like oh well that's ju it's just magic like you're just throwing things out and then it comes back to you well, it's not exactly magic. Like it's sort of science. Um, your body, your inner body, your light body is energy. And when you create a thought with that energetic body and you're sending it out, like you're creating your reality. Um, and so while I know that this is my personal experience and nobody can see things from the same point of view that I see them, um, I just want to share my experience of when I look at other people and their light bodies and what they're doing, that's what I see, um, is their energy is affecting the energy around them. So I'm going to share my own story with this, uh, because I feel like it'll be kind of an insight to how to do mirror work. Um, I've done a lot of mirror work in my life. I've, I'm someone that's had a lot of self-awareness since I was a child. Um, and so this has come a bit more naturally to me. Like I was born a Pisces. So, you know, there's different things that we're more naturally drawn to, to like understand about the world. So this is um, been something that's yet yeah, more natural to my awareness than maybe to other people, which is why I'm sharing about it because it means a lot to me. Um, so a lot of my lessons, my soul lessons in life have had to do with standing in my power. And so I've had a lot of, I've attracted a lot of situations where I had to stand up for myself. Um, and at each of those moments, because this is my soul growth and my emotional work, um, when I didn't stand up for myself, um, I became the victim. And so then I had this victim story throughout my life. It's like, well, look at this thing that happened to me. I can't do this because this happened to me. And it just got deeper and deeper and deeper until I realized that was the problem and I changed it. I like had to change my awareness that like, the reason that I was the victim was because my energy had the belief that I was the victim, that all these things had happened to me. Um, so when I changed my awareness that <clears throat> I stand in my power and I like tell people to stop and I have boundaries, um, then it all started to change for me. Um, so that's one. Um, another is, um, like for me, it's been like my relationship with authoritative males. So they've been absent in my life. And so throughout my life, I've only had a lot of women, um, present in my life. 
And so, um, for me, I've had to face the fact that, like, whenever I looked at a male, I was scared. Or whenever I was engaged with talking to men, I was scared, like I couldn't trust them because they aren't in my life. But that was kind of relating to my own inner authority, my own inner masculine of like, well, like, because I have this relationship with authority, uh, on the outside, I didn't have a relationship to my own sense of authority on the inside. So when I started to stand in that sense of authority and to like use that more masculine side of myself to like make decisions and tell people no and stand up for myself and be assertive, um, then I started like making a lot more money and, and like engaging in things that were very, like made me feel more confident. And so, yeah. That is kind of an example of what mirror work is in my life. The more that you look at your part in how you're living your life, um, the more you're able to make conscious changes that uh, bring in the energy that you're like choosing for yourself in this lifetime, um, or your dharma or your destiny, so to speak. Like the more that you keep blaming it on things that are outside of yourself, the more you're gonna have trouble with your inner world um, because the way that energy works, the energy body is that you like you only attract situations that deal with your, your inner energetic world. So here are some questions for you. Who really are you? What really triggers you? Who can you not stand? Um, how can you integrate these parts of yourself that are missing? And um, once you identify the mirror, um, what can you do? Well, so you can try and just change it yourself, which is like, you know, noticing like, oh, if I have a really, if I have relationship problems with my mom, then like what's going to help that? That's like, it'd be you diving deep into your relationship to see what the problems actually are, what you're missing, what you can do for yourself to like integrate that part of you so that it's not showing up in your outer world all the time. Um, you can do that. You can do soul peace retrievals. Um, you can do therapy in general. Um, you can, I mean, there's so many ways. You could, um, I feel like I'm missing like the one thing. What am I not saying? I mean, it's really just a conscious practice that you have to do yourself. Um, like there's not like a one size fits all sort of thing. Um, but as you continue to, you know, change those neural pathways um, to do something different from what you've been doing before, then you'll see things start to change in your world. And um, I'd say it's super powerful. Um, the Brie that's talking now is completely different than the Brie that was talking two years ago. Um, and I attribute that mainly to uh, looking in the mirror um, and actively changing what was going on inside of me. So um, yeah, um, I'm going to empower you that you have the answers um, and it could be helpful to go to a psychic or to someone that can like assist you in noticing these parts of your energetic world like with your chakras and all of this sound healing to like release that, um, release what's happening in your energetic body, um, Reiki healing, that's what I was missing, Reiki healing, um, will really identify those energetic problems that you're having and you'll be able to talk through it and see like, oh, that's a problem, yes, I need to work on that, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah. Changing your life starts with you. 
So uh, yeah, just remember that maybe if you're tired of researching job after job after job after job or going from relationship to relationship to relationship to relationship um, and you're tired, tired of these cycles like endlessly happening in your life, um, you could try mirroring and see what your emotional work is and choose a different path and maybe that might help going forward. So yeah, that's all I have for today. Uh, thanks for joining me for my, this episode and um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye!